short-lived, which would be biennial cactus group of the compositae, are part positive medicine. And that's the juice, a juice plant, and a tea of the root. And if you can get really juicy ones, peeling off the spiny outer layer and then just eating it as you would an artichoke. And it is a near relative of the artichoke. If you've ever seen a globe artichoke, wow, that's an enormous thistle. And it's a great crossover, both in terms of appearance and in content. And what is in there that really helps the cardiac muscle? I don't know. But it is extremely effective. And so if you can't get blessed thistle or holy thistle, or what's the other one? Milk thistle, then just the bull thistle. It's also a source of clean water. So if you're out and about and you're in a dry land situation and you ran out of water again, then peeled big thistle, make sure you have a positive ID that it actually is a bull thistle. The stem, the petioles or the stems of the leaves, great source of pure water. And they're extremely juicy and nice flavor. So John, it's one of those leaves you can eat after you undress it with all those fine. But that's not the same with other thistles. It's, it's harder to undress the others. And there is a perennial, so-called Russian or Scottish or other bad names, that lives forever and has almost no fluid in it and is nasty because it, it grows up from a depth of over a foot as an underground creeping rhizome. Whereas this plant sheds wonderful seeds no, we're not supposed to do this in Washington, but fly away. Look! Oh, well. And here are two examples. Oh, and here's small willow herb. When it's really small, like this, with its beautiful little flowers. You see that little pink flowers? Uh -huh. And it blossoms all summer. And what it does for the environment, I don't know. 